I think that we have some uh, a very talented team, uh, a team that could potentially win it. I think the key is is not just having Rubman leading, but it would be great if he could lead with performances as well. So we're all going to be wishing him runs um, when when his turn comes to to wield the bat. I think New Zealand would be favourites yeah. uh, to qualify with the West Indies. However, Afghanistan are kind of hot and cold in, in T20 cricket. They, they, they've, they've, they've been able to push some of the best teams in the world and uh, cause a few upsets along the way. So, then two weeks to go before the start of the ICC Men's T20 World Cup. We are here once more dissecting the, the team for the West Indies, looking ahead to the World Cup. We are here with cricket royalty, Jimmy, Jimmy Adams, West Indies cricket royalty that is. A man who would, who would have served in many different capacities, starting for dating back from his time as a player all the way to, you know, well, no current batting coach, but even as director of cricket. Welcome, Jimmy Adams. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. You're a man who would know a lot about West Indies cricket um, from your time as a, as a player, but but even more so now the ins and outs of the team because you, you work closely with the team now currently as a, a batting coach, albeit for the test team. Um, you know a lot of these players quite quite closely. How excited are you? Or what's your feeling, let me ask you that, about the, the recently named 15-man squad for the D20 World Cup? I think like most people in the region, I'm pretty excited, first of all, for being able to to host the, the, the tournament. I think it's a, a huge um, fillip for, for cricket to have a, a tournament of that stature being hosted. I'll be we're co host but but even so. So that that in itself is is a very exciting issue. And then um I think that we have some uh, a very talented team, uh, a team that could potentially win it. And uh, like everybody else, I'm I'm really looking forward to watching the team as they progress through the tournament. Yeah, it would be exciting to have to win the title on home soil. As you said, it's co-hosted by the US and and the West Indies. You know, June first to 29th will be exciting. You know, to to lift that third title would be would be nice on home soil. As I said earlier. When we look at the, the team that's named, you said it's, it's exciting because of the, the name, the players that's there, the, the, it's the poor hitting maybe that gets everybody even more excited. Um, let's see if we can break down the team uh, uh, bit by bit, but let's start with the captain in Robman Powell, someone who I assume that you know well. Talk to me about his leadership quality and him working with Darren Sammy um, recent, uh, well, I wouldn't say recent, but coach, current coach of the team and, and what they can bring, the success they can bring to, to this team. Rubman has um, proven himself as a leader regionally. Um, he's, he's had some, some decent results as captain both of Jamaica and the West Indies. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the players, I think, have responded well to his leadership. And he seems to be working well with the, the head coach, Darren Sami and his group. So I think you have a, what looks from a distance to be a fairly settled leadership group. Uh, and I do think that that is important. Darren Sammy himself back in the day, I think, provided that amongst many other attributes. So I think the key is is not just having Rubman leading, but it would be great if he could lead with performances as well. So we're all going to be wishing him runs um, when, when his turn comes to, to wield the bat. And I think performances for any captain is, is really important. So if he can rack up some some early performances in this tournament, I think it will do his confidence and the team's confidence the world of good. But uh, yeah, he has a really good relationship with Darren and I think it will be a, a real positive for the team. Yeah. He is one that seems to relish um, responsibility because he always comes to his best when given that added responsibility. So I expect he will lead from the front um, with performances. They are drafted in, in group um, C, Afghanistan, New Zealand, Papua New Guinea, and Uganda, mm -hmm. right? Um, they are expected to come out of the group, in your estimation, you tell me. Uh, 
definitely. Uh, I, I would I would like to think that uh, that that group of players playing well, playing at home, would be able to to pick up one of the uh, top two spots coming out of that zone. Yeah, if if you should look at the group, let me repeat the the the, the teams: Afghanistan, New Zealand, West Indies, Papua New Guinea, and Uganda. Uh, which other team do you think will be coming out of the group with West Indies? I think New Zealand would be favourites yeah. uh, to qualify with the West Indies. However, Afghanistan are kind of hot and cold in, in T20 cricket. They, they, they've, they've, they've been able to push some of the best teams in the world and uh, cause a few upsets along the way. So I don't think Afghanistan or indeed any of the teams are to be taken lightly. Uh, but I do expect that um, the West Indies would qualify from that group. And I would say that New Zealand would be favourites to qualify with them. Yeah, we expect them to, to qualify and we, we just touched on Ravman Powell, but in terms of, you know, the other players that you expect to make some 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 great markers in this tournament, to have an impact on the tournament in order to propel the team um, um, forward. I don't know if you have maybe a powerful playing 11 in your head and, and maybe the impact players you expect or the ones you, you are looking at say, these players need to step up and, and, and deliver for the team in terms of putting the team in that position to qualify from the group. No, I leave it, it potential 11s for the for the coaching staff and the pundits like yourself. Um, I think there's enough talent in the squad. I think any 11 that they put out, um, playing well and and playing consistently, will get us through to the the knockout stages. Um, we, we could spend all night naming the world class players that we have in the squad. Um, they tried and proven. Um, a lot of them are currently playing IPL cricket and and holding their own. So they'll, they'll come into this tournament prepared. They have some warm-up games against South Africa um, for the ones who aren't at the IPL. So they'll be preparing well. And we just hope that, you know, everybody goes in confident and everybody stays fit and that we can we can see some really world-class performances from the group collectively. Yeah. That, let's, let's touch on, as you said, those warm-up games. Let's, let's segue a bit into that. Those warm-up games for the players that are not in, in at the IPL, um, how important are those games for those players? Um, and it's, uh, we'll talk talk about that rather than King later. But how important do you think it is for those players? I think it's very important. I think getting much time before a tournament is, is critical. And I think the, the timing of the games is also important. And I think the, the I think CWI have got the timing right. So that they, they can play some competitive games and get enough time between those competitive games and the World Cup, just to get some time to step back, reflect on the three games. Uh, I think by then you will have the guys coming in from the IPL who would have been playing cricket consistently for, for the last two months. So you'll have everybody with so much time under the belt, which I think is very important. Uh, and it'll give the, the team management uh, a lot, hopefully, to think about uh, when players put in performances. And, and what you want is competition for spaces going into the World Cup. Uh, there, there's nothing like players competing for games at a major tournament. It, it makes everybody step up. Um, it, it lifts the standards right throughout the, the, the squad. And hopefully that will be part of what they get from these games going into the, the World Cup itself. Yeah, and and um, let's touch a little bit on Brandon King. He would have suffered an injury um, leading up to the, to the World Cup, unfortunately. How important do you think it is for him, for him to get that sort of time in the middle to, to get back to, to his best? Well, uh, we, we said it for the question before. Um, game time is important. Um, it'll be important for Brandon. It'll be important for, for all of them who are playing, who are not playing in the IPL. So you can put all the other names beside Brandon who will be playing against South Africa. Yeah. They will want middle time. They will want performances. They want to be out there doing their skill sets under pressure against quality opposition. And it gives everybody a measure of where they are individually and collectively leading into the tournament. So it's a, it's a good thing. Not just for Brandon, but for the entire squad. Okay. All right, let's go back to the back to the group in terms of New Zealand um, and the qualities they bring. Afghanistan, the, the qualities they, they bring to the fore. They start with New Zealand. Uh, you you see them as the, the biggest threat to, to, to West Indies in the group because you would have picked them to come out of the group with West Indies. Um, in terms of what they bring and how West Indies will look to, to match up against them to ensure that they get the points of uh, a New Zealand to set themselves good for the, for the group. Why you take on New Zealand and, and their team? I don't know if you know what their squad is like. 
I'll have a look at the squad, but I'm, I'm, I'm not too up to date on, on where their players are. Uh, I know a couple of them are, are, are playing in the IPL as well. Uh, but New Zealand have always traditionally punched above their weight in international tournaments. And I don't think that this World Cup is going to be any different. Uh, it's almost sometimes irrelevant. Well, I shouldn't say irrelevant, but when you try and, and, and match uh, player for player into trouble, because sometimes they bring players we've never seen and they, they, they bond very quickly. They, they adapt very quickly to international cricket. And they, they like to see themselves as underdogs, uh, and that tends to bring the best out of them. I don't think this New Zealand squad will be any different. Um, I'm not too clued in on who the top players are currently. Uh, I think Ken Williams is still there, Santa, the left-arm spinner. Um, they might have Ferguson playing. He has a bit of pace. But I'm not, I'm not too clued into the squad itself, but you can, guarantee, you can be guaranteed that they're going to be, be playing very, very competitive cricket um, collectively, and, and they have match winners. So, so they're a team that you have to be always on the lookout against and, and you have to bring an A game but that's what World Cups are about because even against teams that you might not fancy if you, if you turn up on a day and you're not with it you'll get beaten so yeah it, it's, it's, it's an interesting group as we keep saying and, and I, I don't expect New Zealand to, to arrive and be any less competitive than they've been in the last 10, 15, 20 years in international tournaments across both white ball formats because their team is maybe one that you could describe as being very balanced, um, having quite a number of all-rounders that really, really will, will, will give you some, give any team um, competition, have real power in, in terms. We know Glenn Phillips quite well from, from his time in the, in the CPL, um, an important player for them now in the middle order. And, and just that experience, because if you look, when you look at their team, they have a lot of experienced players who have been around um, playing all formats of the game and and will will give give any team uh, some really really great work and challenge. Um, let's look at Afghanistan. This is a team that is maybe more known for their spin press because they tend to bring maybe maybe you're looking at Afghanistan probably playing even for spinners, um, and that's something we'll talk about. Um, but this is a team that is very experienced, getting gaining a lot of experience despite being a young team. Um, because of the players playing a lot of cricket around the world, playing in the, the different franchise leagues, um, T20 leagues. Um, what what do you think maybe is their their biggest attribute? You know, we touched on that spin, but their biggest attribute and and how West Indies will look to to approach an Afghanistan. I can't speak to a West Indies approach again. I'm not close enough to the squad, but I think Afghanistan one they have talented players. Um, People talk about the, the spinners, but they have batsmen who are good T20 batsmen. And and also, I would, I would suspect, I, I'll take an educated guess, that they will come at any team from a position of having no fear of failure. Yeah. They, 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 they probably won't start favourites against the teams that are expected to qualify from the group. So they probably won't start as favourites against West Indies or New Zealand, which I think suits them and, and suits where they are, where they sit in world cricket right now. I, I think their players actually prefer that and would probably it would probably bring the best out of them so i think that situation and the obvious talent that they have is is a is a good enough combination to get results if the teams that they're playing against don't turn up and play proper cricket yeah this it, it is an ex exciting team because as you said people will look at their their your bowl well, their spin right in the past few years and they should show that with the likes of Rashid Khan, Mujibur Rahman, Noor Ahmed coming to the fore, and Mohamed Nabi still around, but all around the, but the, the, the explosiveness of the likes of Ramanula Gubaz um, is something that um, I think the world is now taking notice because they will get at you, and the likes of Ibrahim Zadran and, and Ajibullah Zadran in the middle, you know, they will they will take the game to you and they'll, they'll bat sensibly and, and give themselves a best, the best chance against any team. They're not afraid, as you said, just now, they'll take on any team, and they like that being oh, not not the not the, the not favourites going into any game. But if we should look at the other two teams in in the group, um, maybe um, to be quite frankly, they are not expected to get out of the group. But they like to Papua New Guinea and Uganda. Um, these smaller teams always want to to leave some sort of mark at an international tournament. So I think that what you think about that in and and you said earlier not taking them taking any team. For granted, 
I think T20 cricket, by the, the nature of the format itself, um, the, the length of the format, I think it, it allows for more potential for upsets than probably any other format uh, yeah. with a 50 over test cricket. And this is something uh, that will encourage T20 cricket any by team the nature of the format itself up. on the day. Um, the, the in length of the 20 format, overs, I think a lot of funny things can happen. For more, and the fact that you have potential very little recovery than time. probably any other format. Unlike the other uh, formats where you can regroup collectively. And, and, and this is something that will encourage uh, any higher levels of skill in a T20 over a longer period. We'll, we'll usually the, win out. The, because in, of the inside 20 nature overs, of this a lot format, of funny things can happen. It, it gives, I think, more opportunity the for the weaker teams. And, and they're aware of this, and I'm sure that it is something that will provide encouragement and motivation for them. And it, to me, just as the spectacle, it, it, it makes... Maybe this format at a World Cup a lot more exciting for the potential for upsets than maybe any other form. Yeah. All right. So we have it that West Indies and New Zealand are expected to get out of the group. Um, can't take Afghanistan for granted. Let's just quickly just take a, a quick look at the other three groups um, in terms of who you think would be would be um, favorites to get out of the group. And um, Group A, uh, we have Canada, India. Ireland, Pakistan, and USA in this group. Give me your take as to the team that you expect to get out of the group. Um, Indian, who is it? You said Pakistan? Pakistan, Ireland, USA, and Canada. Yeah, India and Pakistan. Yeah. I, I think it's, for a lot of people, it's, straight, it's straightforward to say India and Pakistan to get out of the group. But I didn't, I didn't I, okay, let me just say, I didn't say it was straightforward. You asked yeah, me who I think the favorite would be. And, uh, so, yeah, okay. Yeah, for a lot of people, it, okay. that's how they have it. But then when we when we also look at what Pakistan sometimes bring to a World Cup or or not bring to a World Cup, um, that is, because we've seen Pakistan, they can be the best team. They can come out on one day and blow you away and another day they are not at their best. And even in that recent that series last week against Ireland, um, I think the first game of that series, Ireland um, beat them. It, you realize that's a team that can be vulnerable, and they have some some internal issues with 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 their three big name players. Some the whole sort of thing circulating because China Freedy was stripped of the captaincy. The captaincy went back to Barbara's arms. Some people saying this one should have gotten it. All of those sort of things. And if they are not at their best, maybe we could be looking at them. Um, maybe allowing a little bit of wiggle room for some upsets, and as you said, this format it, it, it could. If they should slip up from the three other teams, Canada, Ireland, and US, which team you think could get a shoe on in, in, in there? Current form, throw your money behind any one of them. I, I don't think I don't think any one of them will get significant odds over the other two. So, um, and I don't know enough about them to, to comment. Uh, I, I don't think they in any of the methodations that have by far and away uh, a, a more talented group than the other. So I would and, just and say whoever turns up on the day and plays better. Maybe they could turn up on the day and, and give some trouble um, to any team that they play. And, and they're looking to go cricket in the region. Um, let's look at Group B. Australia, England, Namibia, Oman, and Scotland are the teams in, in that. Australia, group. England. Australia, England um, expected to, to get out of that group. And then the, the last group with maybe a little bit closer in with Bangladesh, Nepal, Netherlands, South Africa, and Sri Lanka. What two teams may be looking at getting out of that group? South Africa, Sri Lanka. South Africa, Sri Lanka. Um, I don't know how well you know know these these teams. You know, South Africa, Sri Lanka, maybe even Bangladesh. Um, what what do you think are the attributes that would propel South Africa, Sri Lanka over a Bangladesh? I think they're a more talented squad. Okay. All right. All right. They really have some some talent and power hitting South Africa. They're they're showing that, and I guess we will see that. Um, in that series against the West Indies, let's see how they how they they turn up and how West Indies will look to navigate against them. Mm. All right, Jimmy, thanks for your your insight. I think you. Yeah, no problem, man. 